three stocks at 52-week lows. Guys, this is a great place to start to find potential value plays. A stock could be a 52-week low and still be overpriced, or it could be a 52-week low and be an amazing deal. That's the point of doing this. Guys, if you have our software, follow along for these three stocks. First one, Carvana, C-V-N-A. I like Carvana as a company. Let's see if we like the stock. So, ooh, wow. Do you see this? The stock hit a high of 376. 52 weeks, guys, 52 week high for 376. Please listen to me. Don't be like I was 20 years ago where I thought a stock at 380, if it went to 100, it was undervalued. These things happen all the time. They happen quickly. 376, less than a year ago, down to $23 recently. And the current price is 24 bucks. It's at a 52 week low. Let's look at the 10 year chart. This goes back to 2017. Holy cow. Look at that chart. It happens, guys. Let's go to the eight pillars tab. And take a oh, 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 oh. okay, guys. Okay, the only positive they have going for them here is revenue growth, thirteen billion dollars. Everything else is scary. No PE, no price of free cash flow. They've increased their shares outstanding by five hundred percent. Guys, these are not stock splits. They're just diluting the heck out of you. Oh my lordy, negative cash. I don't know what to say here, guys. This is bad. Negative 30. Guys, this is a growth company. So you have to sit here and go, okay, we all fall into, we see the tower of Carvana. We see these. We see this awesome tower at night. It's lit up. It's got all these cars in there. I love that you just go pay the price and you move on. I love that. But does that make the company, does that make the stock a great stock? Guys, if you bought the stock five, six years ago, you've been diluted now. Huge, big time, six to one. Six to one, you've been diluted. So let's go to the stock analyzer tool. I don't think there's anything we can do with the stock analyzer tool. Why? Uh, what's the profit? There's nothing. I mean, they're, they're losing money like crazy. This is, I mean, the revenue growth is incredible. Let's go look at that revenue growth on our software. Look at this. 70 million in 2016. 13 billion last year. But keep in mind, guys, what's happened to used cars in the last year? There, uh, guys, I, in, recently I sold, I'm very fortunate, I sold three cars that I owned. I ended up, I've owned those cars for an average of three years. I lost zero dollars. I made money on those cars. I drove them for three years. People in my family drove them for three years and I lost zero dollars. I made money on the cars. You can't assume that's going to happen forever. That's what's driven up a big part of this um, revenue. Let's go to the profit numbers. Oh, Boise. Their best year was only losing 17 million. That was the year they, 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 they went, it was 2016. Guys, I'm going to sit here and say, I can't, I'm not going to be that guy who does it. I'm not going to be old Paul. There's 10,000 stocks out there. I'm going to find a better stock to do. So let's look at Sienna. That's stock number two. So let's go up here. Sienna Corp. What do they do? I don't even know what they do. Network and technology company provides network hardware and software and services to support transport switching, blah, 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 blah. All right, let's go to their eight pillars. Okay, better than Carvana. Not saying much, but better than Carvana. Very minor, minor dilution. A little bit higher on the price of free cash flow, but in the ballpark for PE. A lower return on invested capital. This actually kind of surprises me. Software businesses tend to have a higher return on invested capital. This is more hardware maybe. I don't know. Reasonable debt, revenue growth, net income kind of dropping a little bit. Let's see why net income dropped. Let's see how that's going on in the income statement. All right, so it's pretty stagnant revenue growth over the last few years. Net income. Oh, just have, look at this, guys. I love this. This is why we do this. It's comparing rev profit to that year. This year was a fluke year. Fluke year right here. 100, 200, 300. So it, it's not a revenue. It's not a profit drop. It's one of those situations where it's a false, a false negative, right? Yes, it technically was a profit drop, but this was clearly a fluke year. So... That's why we do this process. So let's go to the stock analyzer tool and make some assumptions here. Because remember guys, every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. And we don't know the future. So we have to make assumptions about the future. The stock analyzer tool allows us to make assumptions about revenue growth, profit growth, and free ca ca cash flow to determine the price of the company that we want to pay today. That is the whole point of this. We use the one, five, and 10 year data to, to make assumptions about the future and it'll tell us, hey, based on these assumptions, this is what you should pay for the company. So let's start with profit, with revenue growth. They did 8% a year in the last 10 years, had a big year last year. In the last five years, about 7.5%. Everybody had a big year last year. So I'm gonna be more conservative. I'm gonna go four, six, and 8%. Profit margin. Okay, so five-year number is pretty good, but that included that big fluke year. Remember, it included that big fluke year. So I'm gonna be a little more conservative. I'm gonna go seven, eight. 0.5 and 10%. Free cash flow margin, I'm going to do 
six, I'm gonna do seven, eight, and 9%. Now guys, before we get into PE, this is what I wanna get at right now. The stock analyzer tool has become the most important part of our software because it allows our users to take control of their own assumptions and to look at a stock and say, I like the stock, here are the assumptions I'm making. If you're like I was 20 years ago, I had no process. This is not a criticism. That's just the way I was. I just thought you bought sexy, fun companies that were growing and you watched the stock go up. And then I saw two major crashes and I thought to myself, well, that doesn't make any sense. And then I found value investing. And I realized through business that every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. And sometimes you just have to be patient. So I created this software for my internal use. If you look at our old videos, I was using this in an Excel sheet. And the most common comment I got was, how do I get that Excel sheet? So we made the software. This solved the entire problem I had before. It gave, it gave all the income statements, all the balance sheets, all the cash flow statements. It showed the eight pillars of the companies that did all the math for me so I could spend my valuable time doing the things I loved, investing my money and doing everything else in the world that I want to do. Not spend all my time analyzing, pulling up charts, all these things, searching for data. It gave it all here for me. The news, everything. But most importantly now, what's come of it is this community. We've had over 12,000 people sign up for the software and they're in here chatting. It's a very active community. You can look at every type of investment. There's different chats. There are people in there who are big on crypto and Tesla. And they disagree with me wholeheartedly on both. That is fine. We have great conversations. We talk about life. We talk about investing. We talk about business. We do all of this. It's all available right here in the software. This software is so simple to use and it's less than a cup of coffee per day. All you have to do is sign up and you're going to change your financial future. This little bit right here, if used properly, could lead to hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in extra money in retirement by less than a cup of coffee per day. So guys, financial freedom, time. That's what this gives you. It lets you do all the things you want to do instead of spending your time following the hypesters and doing all this useless research you don't need. Two ways to sign up. Everythingmoney.com or patreon.com for international users. Sign up right now. It will change your financial views of the world. Please sign up. So back to Siena. PE, I'm gonna go conservative 13, 15, 17. And the reason I do that is, guys, I just look at historical averages of PE. Should be about 15. So I'm gonna go a little lower and a little higher. And for our final desired return, 12.5% because I can get nine or 10% by doing an ETF. So I might as well get a little bit more bang for my buck. The stock is currently at 48 bucks. I hit the analyze button and here it is. A low of 22, a high of 40. Basically, we're at the high, 48.24 and somewhere in the middle is low 30s. So whatever price you choose, you can add it to your watch list in our software and the software will email you. You can even change it. Like this one, I might change to 37 bucks. Notify me, I'll get an email and I'll get a text message on my on my Everything Money software app, which comes on iOS and Android. Our final company, MCO, Moody's. Moody's, if those of you who pay attention, Moody's is the company that, uh, was it S&P or Moody's? They're the ones that did the ratings in the big short. And I think Warren Buffett either still does or used to have a big investment in Moody's. But look at this stock price, guys. A high of 408 and a low of 269, and it's currently at 288. Eight pillars tab. Look at this. Overpriced, overpriced. Well, we don't know for sure if it's overpriced, but right now, that's the metric saying it right now. Remember, stocks can be high, have high PEs and high price of free cash flow if they have a great moat and if they have great revenue growth. So let's go see if the, if the uh, juice is worth a squeeze right here. Man, look at this. Look, I'm going to go look at this income statement. Look at this revenue growth consistently over the last 10 years and profit growth just consistent over the last 10 years. Okay. So I'm going to do four, six, and 8% revenue growth. Look at this high profit margin and high free cash flow margin. So a low of 28%, a high of 32. So I'm going to do 27, 29, and 31. I'm going to do the same thing for free cash flow. But again, guys, I'm cutting that PE down because 27 is not a reasonable PE for such a large company. And I do my 12.5% return. The company is currently at 288. All right, so we're not far off, but 112 is a low, 200 is the high, 150 is the middle. So it's got to actually fall in half from here. But guess what? 27 divided by two, 13 and a half, 14. So it kind of makes sense. So I'm going to add it to my watch list 
probably somewhere a little bit above 149. I might change this to 170. Notify me. If you want to learn more about our process, watch this next video on how to long-term invest in the stock market.